Well, hello, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes, and this is Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. It truly is my pleasure to bring you some transformative biblical truth and today more encouragement for you from the word of God. We're in the I'm Building Something series, so let's continue by bowing first. Most gracious and heavenly Father God, we do thank you, we bless you, we honor you for yet another opportunity to come before your presence. Open up our eyes of understanding today to see you more clearly, to follow you more dearly. Lord, we need you. Even as we continue to build, we recognize we can't do it without you. If you're not in the midst of it all, if you don't build a house, we labor in vain that try to build it. So speak to us today, speak through us today, speak through me so that your people who are listening to this, whenever they are listening to it, will be forever changed. We'll continue to lift your name on high and give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you today. We are still in the I Am Building Something series, and this is part eight. So if you have missed any of the previous ones, make sure you go back and listen to those. I'm excited about what God is doing in this time, but I don't want to belabor the point. We're going back to Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter number seven. And I'm actually just reading portions today, but I like for you to read the entire thing. The Bible says, when the wall had been rebuilt and I had the doors installed, the gatekeepers, singers, and the Levites were appointed. Then I put my brother Hanani in charge of Jerusalem, along with Hananiah, commander of the fortress, because he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. I said to them, do not open the gates of Jerusalem until the sun is hot and let the doors be shut and securely fastened while the guards are on duty. Station the citizens of Jerusalem as guards, some at the posts and some at their homes. The city was large and spacious, but there were few people in it and no houses had been built yet. Then my God put it into my mind to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the people to be registered by genealogy. I found the ge genealogical record of those who came back first and I found the following written in it. And it goes through all the different people who were there. I uh, just pointing out the fact that Israelite men were included. It also indicated that priests were included. It indicated that the Levites were included. The singers were included. The temple servants were included. The descendants of Solomon's servants were included. And then in verse 61, it says, the following are those unable to prove that their families and ancestors were Israelites. It goes on to say that, uh, 64, these search for their entries in the genealogical records, but they could not be found. So they were disqualified from the priesthood. The governor then ordered them not to eat the most holy things until there was a priest who could consult the Urim and the Thummim. Thummim. Uh, the whole combined assembly, it says in verse 66, numbered 42,360, not including the 7,337 male and female slaves, as well as their 245 male and female singers. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels and 6,720 donkeys. Now, some of the family leaders, it says in verse 70, gave to the project and it identifies what they gave. The governors gave a thousand gold coins, 50 bowls and 530 priestly garments to the treasury. Some of the family leaders gave 2,000 gold coins and 2,200 silver minas to the treasury for the project. The rest of the people gave 20,000 gold coins, 2,000 silver, silver minas, and 67 priestly garments. So the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the temple singers, some of the people, temple servants, and all Israel settled in their towns. And that's a lot. One, I'm, I'm really appreciative of the fact that God is a detailed God and he breaks down things. When you're building something, you got to count the cost. That's what it says in the book of Luke. You've got to count the cost before you start building. So that's important to know. But there's so much that is in here. Today, 
the message from the I'm Building Something series part eight is I need to know. I need to know, you need to know. And I'm going to start off by saying sometimes people are just plain nosy. They don't need to know. And we say it's on a need to know basis because some people ask questions that they don't need the answers to. They're just trying to find out more about your situation, not to help you, not to benefit you, not to give to you, not to support you, not to move you forward. They just want to be in the mix. You know, they're all in the Kool-Aid and really don't know the flavor. And I kind of noticed that I've got all of these papers on the side. Those papers are for me. They're not for you. So don't try to be nosy. We just want to make sure that whatever you need to know, you do. And that's what we are looking at today. You see, I used to go to the Parade of Homes because I am building a home. And in the Parade of Homes, you got a chance to see the new things that were coming out. I would go by. Now, when I was not trying to build, I was being a little nosy. Let's just be honest. I want to see what's new, what's, what's going on. Not that I'm going to do anything with it, but I wanted to see. Now, when you are building or in the process of building or renovating and you go to the parade of homes, you're looking to see what you might want to incorporate in your building project. So it's a need to know. You want to know the latest materials. You want to know the latest designs. You want to know what the new decorations are. You want to know those things that have the idea of what you want to implement. The same thing goes with building your life. You want to build the right life. And we need the principles of God in order to do just that. And what Nehemiah points out here for us is as he's restoring the people back. Now, he says we need discernment. We need a lot of things, but let's just kind of walk through it. He starts off by saying when the walls were rebuilt and then now he's got the gates that are installed. He says when the walls are rebuilt, when you're rebuilding your life, you have to recognize one, the discernment means that I need to protect the place. I need to protect my place. I need to protect my vessel. I need to protect my person. When something has been rebuilt, it means it's refortified. Sometimes we go through seasons in life that break us down. And in order for us to then continue to move forward and to move forward with excellence, not settle there with wherever we ended up in that season, but to thrive and move forward, we have to rebuild some things. Yeah, we have to kick out shame and disgust and recognize that now there is now therefore no condemnation to them that believe we need to ask for forgiveness and accept and receive the forgiveness and then build something different. We need to consecrate ourselves. We need to do all of these things. That's our fortification. We're building ourselves up on our most holy faith and staying fast to our profession of who it is that we serve. We are built up. So yes, what the enemy meant for evil, God turns around for good and he rebuilds us. And when we're rebuilt, we have to recognize according to the past passage that doors have to also be installed. That means that there's some boundaries that we need to set up. Everybody deserves love, but everybody does not deserve access to you. Not at all times of the evening. And sometimes you have to put your phone on silent. Sometimes you have to delete some context. Sometimes you have to just not respond to a text. Sometimes you can't answer the call. Sometimes some people don't recognize their place and the limited access that they have because you don't want even the appearance of evil. You also have to put in some gatekeepers. See, this is the discernment that Nehemiah shows to us. Those are those who are going to protect. Some people will be protectors of you, armor bearers, if you will, and those who will stand guard to make sure that only those who truly have access can come into you. And those are good people. We want to pray for the gatekeepers. And then he identifies, he said, and appointed Levites as well. Those are the servants in the temple. There's some service that we need to do for the kingdom. And we want to make sure that those things are set in place too. It's not all about receiving, but we have to give. And as they say, givers do gain. You give and God will is going to always be your giving, no matter how hard you try. 
And then there were the singers that he appointed. Those singers are the praisers. So praise is what we do. It's commonly for the upright. We need to make sure that when we put out the praise that God is welcomed, his presence is welcomed into our place. So if we want to build appropriately, Nehemiah identifies for us, we have to rebuild, we have to fortify, that we have to install gates. We need to have our boundaries or doors, I should say. We need to have some gatekeepers or our protectors. We need those that are going to be serving in the kingdom. And that includes us as well as the praisers. That's our team. Well, there's three things that he identifies for us that we need, and that's requirements. Notice he sets two people in place, and he says, because they were faithful and they fear God the most, or more than most. They fear God more than most. The question is that you need to have some requirements for the people that you do allow in your life. Everybody can't come in. You can't serve everyone. Even in business, you have a specific goal or target audience that you know your message is going to reach. It is designed for them. It's a mission that you have set out. You are fighting for them or you're fighting against something else, but it's a specific group of people. It's not everybody that can come in. It's specifically for those who have this need. I do the same even with my coaching business. And so here's the key though. There are some requirements. You don't want to let the wrong people in because it will change the culture in your business. You don't want the wrong ones in your group because it will change the flow of the group and the ability or the consistency for those that are in the group to be fed. So we have to be careful. It's not that you don't like everyone. It's just that this particular group is for a certain group of people. They have requirements and you need to have requirements too. So here's the question. Who in your life meets the qualifications? Who in your life meets the qualifications? I'm going to leave that there because I'm not trying to be nosy. I just know that you need to know. Who meets those qualifications? Who have you allowed to sit at your table? The second thing that you need to do, as Nehemiah identifies for us, is some put in place some restrictions. Yeah, the restrictions are not to limit you, but it's to, to keep the intruders out, those that who are going to invade, the, minimize the threats. Notice it said, we're only going to leave the gates open when the sun is high, burning hot in the sky. And we're going to make sure the guards are there to close the gates before the sun goes down. Why? Because when there's a number of people around the invaders, we're minimizing their threats to us. So we need to make sure that we put in some restrictions. So not only requirements, but we also need restrictions. But the third thing that we need is relationship. And you need to know. Notice he said, my God, put it in my mind. Mm. That's probably the best part of this entire passage. He said, my God gave me direction. And we need God to give us direction as well. And the direction that Nehemiah got was to take a census, to find out who was in the house. Know who is with you. Also know who's against you, but know who is with you. See, and then he turns around and he says, and then people gave to the project because remember, we're counting the cost. The leaders gave, the people gave. You can't build without funding. So relationship is important. Partnership is important. Know who you're connected to. Know who is at your table and whose table you are sitting at. And the leaders must also lead by example. This is power packed with so much information. My question for you on this one is, are you asking others to give more than you are willing to give? Are you asking them to contribute to your mission more than you're contributing to your mission or to contribute to you more than you're contributing to you? You need to invest in you, invest in your mission before you then ask someone else. So yes, there are requirements. Yes, there's some restrictions that you need to put in place. And the most important thing is the relationship. What do you need to know? 
not being nosy, not getting in your business, but you need to know God. You need to know who he is, not just that he's the big man in the sky. No, what is his name? What are you asking for? Don't limit him. Don't box him in. He's not just savior, but he's also and should be Lord of your life. He should be leading you appropriately. What do you need from him? He is Jehovah. What is he? Who did he say he was to Moses? He said, I am that I am. I am whatever you need me to be. I am whatever you needed me to be. I am who, whoever you need me to be in the future past, present, and future. I've got you covered. I am. I am your Jehovah Jireh. I will be your provider. You didn't know you needed provision. You didn't know it until your money was funny. Your change was strange. You didn't recognize it until you needed him to provide for you and come through for you in the midst of a COVID situation. You didn't recognize that you needed God. Did you know that you needed him to protect you? You thought others were stationed around you and you didn't realize that they were going to let somebody in that was there to harm you. You need God to protect. You need to hear his voice. You need to know what he is saying to you. You need to know how he is directing you. He is truly more than you can imagine. So truly don't box him in. He says, I am what you need, what you need is. I am what you need. And I'm, I am what you will need in the future. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, reminds us that there's this great cloud of witnesses. They are witnessing the fact that God has been, will be, and forever is all that we need. As these witnesses come through, they'll, they'll tell you that they walked through the Red Sea. They'll tell you they walked over the Jordan River. They'll tell you that the walls came tumbling down. They will tell you that he healed, he delivered, and he set free, that he healed children as well as he uh, mended relationships. He'll tell you that even when they were wrong, he came in and brought, he made the wrong right. He turned it around for their good. He'll tell you that he will put you in a pit and then place you in the palace. He will tell you these witnesses will testify to the fact that you can be zealous going off in the wrong direction. He will stop you, bring you to your knees and let you see who he really is. God will tell you that this is the purpose and the plan that I have for your life. These are the people that I want you to serve. He will tell you that I've got so much more for you, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He will tell you that you are more than a conqueror, that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And he will tell you that he will allow you to condemn every tongue that rises up against you. He will tell you that he will raise you from a sick bed. He will tell you that he will take care of your family members. He will tell you that he will watch over your children. He will tell you you that where you cannot be, he's already gone before, that he will go into the doctor's room. He will go into the courtroom. He will do whatever you need him to do in order for you to accomplish the goal that he has set out for you to reach. God, you need to know. Not being nosy. Read the Bible. You're not being nosy. You're finding out more about him because situations do bring on revelation. And the more you know, the more you can grow. And the more you grow, the more you're going to be able to then call upon his name, not just sing a song about him, but know the song that the one that you're singing to and what you're singing about. It comes out differently when you pray to the one that you really know who it is that you're talking to. When you say, God, I need you to be here in the midst of a fiery furnace with me because I'm going through some fire right now. And I want to be able to come out not even smelling like smoke. You did it for the three Hebrew boys in Daniel chapter number three. Help me, Lord. I know you're more than able. You did it for them. You say you're not a respecter of persons. You'll do it for me too. You need to know God. You need to know him. You need to know his names. I need to, if I'm going to build something, if you're going to build something, you need to know God. Except he built the house. They labor in vain that build it. So let's not labor in vain. Let's go to the one who is more than able to right wrongs, to set the path and to set the course. That's the God that we serve. Let's pray. 
Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we do thank you. We bless you. We honor you just for being God all by yourself. And we don't call you just a general God. You are our champion. We need you to fight our battles. We recognize you to be a deliverer. We need you to deliver us from one season to the next, from settling to serving. We need you to, to go from just surviving to thriving. God, we need you to deliver us. Some enemies are coming up against us and we need your protection. We need you to have a banner of victory over us, O oh Lord. Lift up a standard against them, Father, as we continue to walk through. God, we need you to turn some situations around. You, I, We recognize that every time we turn around, you keep on blessing us. Bless us again, yet indeed. Lord, we need to see you as our Jehovah Jireh. We need to know you to be our Jehovah Rapha. We need to see you as our Jehovah Shalom. We need your peace, God. We need your healing virtue. We need your provision. We need you to be everything that we need. So we call upon you right now. Help us to see you more clearly so that we might follow you even closer, O oh Lord. Help us to reach out and grab hold to your garment, knowing that power and virtue is going to flow from it, that no one else is able to do for us what you're able to do for us. God, help us to be able to meet our life's demands. Help us to be able to meet the bills and to know the next step and to leave a right legacy and to protect our children and to give them direction and to direct ourselves and invest appropriately. Help us to know Know when to give and when to stop it, what to say and what not to say. Help us, oh God, to listen to you and to hear from you and then to be obedient to what you're asking us to do. We want to build. We want to build on a sure foundation. Help us to know what that sure foundation is. And we know it's on your rock. We start with your Ten Commandments. But God, we need specific directions, just like you gave in the census. You gave specifics in your word in Nehemiah chapter number seven. God, there's some sand ballots and Tobias that are waiting. They're trying to get us down from the wall. They don't want us to rebuild, but we've built some things back up. Help it not to be torn down, but help us to walk in the things you've already given us. And then help us to see and reimagine what the future is going to hold. Help us to see clearly the vision that you have for our lives and help us to reach out for it so that we might attain it. Help us to also then reach back and lift someone else to bring them along. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being our everything. We thank you for your grace that is more than sufficient. We thank you for your mercy that is new every single day. We thank you for being the one that we can run to late in the midnight hour. Thank you for being our comforter and our keeper. Thank you for all that you do and all that you are. Thank you for your loving kindness. We need you and we depend upon you. Show us your glory. For each and every one, Lord, that is tuned in today, I ask that you show them an aspect of yourself that they have never imagined but one that they so need right now. You're an on-time God. You're a right-now God. You're an ever-present God. You're an omnipotent God. You're an omniscient God. You are an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, all everything god be that for us today it's in jesus name that we do pray and give you thanks amen well it truly is my pleasure and i thank you for listening today and most of all even subscribing and sharing this message with someone if you're going to build something there's some things that you need to know and i appreciate the fact that you allow me to serve you. You need to know God. You need to know his word. You need to get in his word. 
You need to make sure you have some boundaries and some restrictions on your life and the access to you. But you need this relationship and I need the relationship with you. So I am so thankful and so grateful. I'm Dr. Shantae Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your week. God bless. You can find us online at h the number two h truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.